Praise the Lord. Beloved, welcome and thank you for joining me once again to listen to the word of God, which has power to calm all the storms in our life. Beloved, I trust that you are well and keeping safe. So today we are continuing the studies on the book of Deuteronomy and we are studying Deuteronomy chapter 23. In this chapter, Moses, the prophet of God, gives final sermons and instructions to the Israelites whom God redeemed from slavery in Egypt 40 years before. At this point, the Israelites are about to enter the promised land, Canaan, that God promised to give to their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Moses talks to them about who may and who may not join the lost people when they gather for worship. And he also instructs them on how to avoid uncleanliness in the new land that they are about to enter. Because God had chosen the Israelites to be his very own people and set them apart, to be his witnesses to the whole world, he required them to live holy lives that will reflect his nature so that they can be his representatives on earth. For this reason, God gave the Israelites laws that will make them achieve the holiness that he requires. The land that Israel was about to enter and the nations surrounding them had many diabolical practices that God forbade the Israelites to copy. Some of these diabolical practices were the cutting off of the male reproductive organ of some men who served in the palaces of their kings. These men were called eunuchs. So if a man was castrated, God commanded it in Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 1 that they were not allowed to join in the assembly of his worship. God did not hate the eunuchs, but he made this law to prevent the Israelites from copying the traditions of the nations around them. God created us to procreate and fill the earth. So in order for God's will to be done on earth and for the earth to be filled with people, God gave this law so that the Israelites will not castrate their males. Also, one of God's laws to keep his people from getting hereditary diseases was for them not to marry members of their own family. This practice is called incest. So in Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 2, Moses said that the consequence of having children with someone they were forbidden to marry is that the children from the forbidden relationship up to the 10th generation were not allowed to join God's people when they gather for worship. Other people who could not join the Israelites when they gathered for worship were the Ammonites and Moabites. The Ammonites and Moabites were the descendants of the two sons that Abraham's nephew Lot had with both of his daughters. The reason why God forbids the Ammonites and Moabites from joining his people when they gather for worship is not only because they came from incest, but Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 4 says that they cannot join because they didn't greet you, the Israelites, with food and water when you were coming from Egypt. They even hired Balaam, son of Baal, from Petha in Aram Naharim to curse you. But the Lord your God refused to listen to Balaam. Instead, he turned Balaam's curse into a blessing for you because the Lord your God loves you. Never offer them peace or friendship as long as you live. 
So because the Ammonites and Moabites were unkind to the Israelites and hired someone to curse them when they came out from Egypt, God forbade them up to the 10th generation from joining his people when they gathered for worship. Beloved, this scripture is letting us know how faithful God is to those who believe in him. Because the Israelites believed in God and had made him their God, beloved, he protected them and did not allow the evil intentions of their enemies for them from coming to pass. Beloved, when you give your life to Jesus Christ and submit all your will to him, just as he protected the Israelites and did not make Balaam's evil wish or Balaam's curse for them from coming to pass, so will God also protect you from all your enemies and will not make their evil spoken words against you from coming to pass. Beloved, God is faithful and always looks after those who love him. He has said it in Romans chapter 8 verse 28 that all things work together for good for those who love God and those whom God has called according to his purpose. And so, beloved, if you love God, then God also loves you and he will take care of you. He will protect you and he will provide all your needs. Just take this scripture as an assurance that just as God did not allow the evil wills of the enemies of Israel to come against them, so will God also not allow any evil intention of those who seek your downfall from coming to pass. Beloved, God's word is sure and he can be trusted because Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so, just as he protected the people that he loved in the past, so is he protecting you that he loves today. And so, beloved, always be assured and have your faith in God that because you love him and because he loves you, he will always be at hand to protect you whenever you are in need and he will always fight off those who fight against you. Beloved, you can always count on God's word to come to pass because Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 says that God watches over his word to perform it. God always watches over what he has spoken to make it come to pass. God said that the Moabites and Ammonites were not allowed to join in the assembly of the worship of his people until the 10th generation. And beloved, God's word came true because after several generations, God allowed a Moabite woman called Ruth to be in the lineage of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Ruth was King David's great-grandmother, so God allowed someone whose origin was from incest to be allowed in the family line of Jesus Christ. Beloved, this shows how much merciful our God is, that no matter what sin we have committed in the past, if we truly repent, he is able and faithful to forgive us of all our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and even, like Ruth, include us in his divine will on earth. And in verse 7 and 8, God instructed the Israelites to allow the third generation of the Edomites and Egyptians to join them when they gather for worship. The reason is that the Edomites were descendants of Jacob's twin brother Esau. So because the Israelites are descended from Jacob, the Edomites are their brothers. And since the Israelites had depended on the Egyptians before, 
when they lived in their land, God allowed the third generation of these two nations to join the Israelites in their worship. And in verse 9, the Lord said, When you are at war and have set up come to fight your enemies, stay away from anything that will make you unclean. The camp must be holy, for the Lord your God moves around in your camp to protect you and to defeat your enemies. He must not see any indecent thing among you, or he will turn away from you. As well as God wanted the Israelites to keep good hiding, this scripture also speaks about our need to be spiritually clean. Beloved, if an unclean or unholy camp will prevent the Lord from delivering and defeating the enemies of his people, then as Christians, whom the Holy Spirit is not only walking in our midst, but living in our bodies, should put away all manner of uncleanness, which is sin. And as Apostle Paul said it in 1 Timothy, be obedient to God and do not allow your lives to be shaped by those desires you had when you were still ignorant. Instead, be holy in all that you do, just as God who called you is holy. Beloved, the only way we can be obedient to God's word and not be controlled by the evil desires of this world is to continuously read the Bible and allow the word of God in the Bible to transform the way we think. And so, beloved, reading on, in verse 17, the Lord said, No Israelite man or woman is to become a shrine prostitute. You must not bring the earnings of a female prostitute or of a male prostitute into the house of the Lord your God to pay any vow because the Lord your God detests them both. The people who lived in the land that God was about to give to the Israelites and the nations surrounding them were idol worshippers. In some of their religious practices, both males and females prostituted themselves in the worship of their gods. These are some of the detestable acts that those nations practiced and which made God decide to give their land to the Israelites. So God wants the Israelites not to copy the detestable practices of these nations so that they will remain holy in his eyes and so that he will make them inherit the land of promise, Canaan, forever. This scripture also lets us know that the way we earn our money is important in the eyes of God. So we must ensure that our wages are not obtained through degrading means which dishonor the Lord. And verse 21 says, When you make a vow to the Lord your God, do not put off doing what you promised. The Lord will hold you to your vow, and it is a sin not to keep it. It is no sin not to make a vow to the Lord, but if you make one voluntarily, be sure that you keep it. This principle is for us to be careful about making vows either to the Lord or to one another. Jesus Christ referred to this very scripture in Deuteronomy when he talked to his disciples about the importance of reliable words. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 33, Jesus said, You have also heard that people were told in the past, Do not break your promise, but do what you have vowed to the Lord to do. But now I tell you, do not use any vow when you make a promise. Do not swear by heaven, for it is God's throne. Simply let your yes be yes and your no, no. Jesus is simply telling us that our words need to be truthful and dependable. 
So beloved, summing up today's study, the first part of Deuteronomy chapter 23 shows us that anyone who comes into the presence of God must be holy. All the laws restricting access to God remained in place until the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Beloved, because God loves us so much and wants a relationship with us, he sent Jesus Christ to come and die in our place for his sacrifice to pay for our sins so that whoever believes in Jesus Christ will be cleansed and have their sins forgiven to make it possible for them to have access into God's presence. So, beloved, let us give thanks to the Lord our God for sending us Jesus Christ, who makes it possible for us to come boldly into the presence of God any time, any place, and any day. So, beloved, this brings us to the end of today's study. Until we meet again, may the Lord God guide you in all that you do and give you victory in Jesus' name. You are blessed.